Hello and welcome to another episode of Tony's Allotment. You know, if there's one thing you can be sure of in Wales, and that's that uh, it rains. And uh, over the last week, it has been no exception. It's been absolutely atrocious. We've had so much rain and and winds and snow and people haven't got a clue what's going on here. And I know a lot of the rest of the country have, have had similar issues. Um, what it's meant is that we haven't been able to do anything on the plot. So even though it's been tipping down everything else, we've been carrying on doing some work on, on the chicken plot. And if you remember from the last episode, we sorted out the ducks and uh, the duck pond and what have you. And now we've split it up and I'll take you over in a moment and show you what's going on. Um, we've continued with the rat catching and uh, we've only caught one more since so we may be on top of it now anyway in this episode we're going to have a little look at what we've done on the chicken plot um, and we are also going to sort out our raspberry canes because um, we should have got them sorted out a long time ago before the winter kicked in but we're going to get them done today so that's what we're going to look at and uh, then we may if we've got time have a look at some other bits and bobs As you can see, the chickens are down there enjoying some uh, kale. Um, we chuck this in daily for them, and uh, you know, and they they love that, and it gives us a much better egg. Excuse the wind, guys. I have got a windshield on. Okay, so changes. We um we took over here, um, and I will show you. We took the feed store. Um, from the end here and we moved the IBC container right back to the fence there okay um, the feed store came over here on this fence that we put up between the, the two plots um, in a bid to stop the rats we've got three dustbins that we put our feed into now and they hold two sacks each so we've got two bins with four sacks of layers in and a bin with two sacks of corn in um what we've done we we've sectioned off this area of the plot and we've made the duck pen a little bit smaller so if you remember just down by there we had the the old duck um coop that we dragged up the other side of the plot what we've done we've harris fenced off this area so we now got quite a, a square area i'm sorry if this is dark guys um i'm sort of facing into the sunlight i might go in and show you at the moment it's a bit boggy we've had a huge amount of rain now we've got a lot of stingy nettles and stuff in here so um what we're going to do we're going to build like a lasagna bed on you um let me just spin around okay so what we've done guys we've harris fenced off this area and uh the ducks can't get down here any longer they've but they've still got there's only eight ducks there they've still got more than enough room um and we're gonna sheet this and build like a lasagna bed and in here this year we're gonna grow our giant marrows or giant pumpkins a courgettes a butternut squash anything like that okay and that's what's gonna happen in the in the pen in this pen so we've just split it up for that reason um the chick uh the duck plot is is ideal the ducks are using the um the pen you know the coop like we uh like we stated before so um so that's pretty much what we've been doing over here uh we do uh it is very boggy around where we've had to dig 
and things like that but like i said we've had a huge amount of rain we've got no bark chip here at the moment so we've got to get some bark chip and there's a bit of wire hanging out there which i need to sort out um but oh the the amount of rain we've had has been absolutely crazy this coop here is going down to mick um he's having that so i'll be out the way and those harris fencing are going to be put up between the two poly tunnels so between my tunnel there and then the guys next door we're gonna have a fence put up between us all the way up up the middle these slabs will go up on some uh, other path around the plot as and when we we get time but um chickens you know they're doing okay um they're happy enough but like i said at the moment it's very very mucky around you um we are quite lucky because I've built this area up quite a lot so, and they're staying out of that mud sort of down by there so it's not a problem. A few weeks ago um, I had a few people asking me um, the difference between the raspberry canes and things like that. Um, usually you've got two types guys, you've got flora cane and you've got primer cane. Okay? Usually the summer fruiting for us uh, raspberries which tend to fruit between sort of june and august um are what's known as the flora cane okay the primer cane are the ones that fruit between sort of august and october now um and you have to prune them totally differently okay everything from this post up to that post these are all our primer canes okay these are our august fruitings or our autumn fruiting raspberries okay and all it means with the primer cane is um if fruits on that year's growth okay so we don't need so so like this one here now still has some dried fruit on it it's no good it's obviously rotten but um that was the growth that started this time last year okay um and you'll just see some of the buds peeking through the ground now which i'll give you a close-up of in a moment um but with these okay so these are the primo canes, okay, the autumn fruit in raspberries. You cut them right back to the ground and you take everything away, okay? And it's just as simple as getting right in there with the secateurs and giving it a good old squeeze and taking it out and putting it right back to the ground. So you cut everything out. And what happens? It will put new fruit, um, new fruit, uh, uh, sorry, new uh, canes up this year, and I'll show you in a moment uh, what will happen. And and basically, when it puts up the new canes, the oh, that's a stiff one. There you go. When it puts up the new canes, um, it will fruit in the August September time on those canes. Okay, and that's how you do it, guys. You just cut it direct to the floor. I'm going to give you a quick look. Here we go. A close-up look on this. And if you can see just here, okay, guys, there's a new shoot coming through there. Look, a little green bud, okay? And they're coming through here as well. Normally, I would tie these canes in, okay? If you notice, this one here is tied in. What it's done is made it a bit easier for us for this year, okay? But last year, we tied our main canes in, Okay, and these are the canes that are tied into this wire. Uh, these are the ones that fruited last year. So what we have to do, we cut them right down to the ground. Okay, and anything that's um, not tied. Okay, so that one's tied. So I'm going to undo him now because I've cut him. We don't need the, the wire on him at the moment. Okay, same up here. Just undo that wire. <laughs> nearly done there we go right and we take that out okay anything that's not tied now just like this one for argument's sake we would put into the uh wire and we would tie him in okay spreading them about so all the loose ones we would normally tie them in but because of last year with nato and everything else we didn't get around to it um these loose ones are last year's growth but these are the ones that are going to fruit this year okay the growth that we had from the year before is what fruited last year okay that's no longer going to fruit but these new growth as you can see already there are buds there are buds all the way up this and this will fruit lovely this year okay and that's essentially the difference between the uh, primer and flora kings and so the summer varieties 
okay the floricanes okay you cut back um the last year's fruiting growth okay and last year's growth that came through you tie in ready to fruit for this year so so basically the growth that grew last year will fruit this year the growth that grows this year will fruit next year okay so that's your summer varieties or your fl flora canes okay and your primer canes okay your autumn varieties okay you'll cut them all back to the ground and then they will sh shoot out now this year and in august you'll get fruit on those so i hope that clears up about the pruning for raspberries and things like that guys um and and don't forget like i say you tie them into a good solid frame and and job done so all you're doing you're cutting out last year's fruit in growth and i'll go around i'll cut all them out to the ground and then we'll tie all the rest in okay so that's really going to be it for uh raspberries I just want to show you guys. I'm just going to take you around a second. What happened with the wind and things up here? I don't know if you can see with all the. I, I don't know. If I come down, you might get a better view um, of a couple of plot holders. Right. This year was a greenhouse. And it's been blown across all the plots. The glass is all gone out of it. And it's uh, just a mangled mess of aluminium. So for those of you who think that greenhouses are stronger than polytunnels. Um, I guess it depends on, on how they put down. Look at the state on that. Uh, however, some polytunnels don't do that well either. Um, this is another plot all this polytunnel. And that's in shreds up here. Like I said, we have had some really bad wind rain and what have you um but as you can see it is a right mess uh a same down the plot there's a couple of um that when there's had all the windows blown out of it so you know it's it's the same no matter where you go now these polytunnels here have survived that one um was my uh next plot holders uh fill and uh that came from first tunnels he paid 750 pounds for that tunnel um he did say there was an issue with uh, ventilation because there's only the two vents in the door there and and one in the back door so it, he said he struggled with ventilation in the summer and you've got my poly tunnel again here which has stood up to all the wind, the rain, the snow, and everything else we've had up here over the last week. Even though it needs a good wash. As you can see, it's totally solid. Now, I would rather this against a, a greenhouse. Not only because you get a lot of space for your money. Okay. Um, but um, they can be built really strongly. Now, you guys, if you look back in my older episode i'm just getting my keys out excuse me if you guys look back into the older episodes you will see where my small 10 by 20 uh polytunnel collapsed due to the snow and that was why i went and built this one in here is really warm it's um minus one outside at the moment my hands are freezing but in here let's uh, just press this reset I don't know if you're going to actually pick this up, guys. My camera is steaming up. It's 16.8 degrees inside here. So, you know, it's really holding the heat as well. I think it might help the fact I've got the concrete slabs in and they hold the heat through the day. But as you can see, you know, it, there's been no issue at all within the polytunnel. So anybody who's looking to get a glass house or a polytunnel... There are pros and cons to both of them, okay? If you're going to get a polytunnel, you know, it you you get what you pay for at the end of the at the end of the day, guys. Um, this tunnel has done me superb, and uh, and I'm more than happy with it. It's held up against everything that uh, that has been thrown at it, and we've had some really bad weather this year. And uh, you know, the winter we had 95 mile an hour winds up here um three days ago and uh it's still standing strong and the reason for that is these scaffolding poles are every four feet and they are hammered into the ground four feet down so 
they really anchored and because the the sides are, are so strong the wind just goes up over the top of it okay and th i think that's the the problem and the plastic can move a little bit with the wind whereas a glass house can't once that wind hits a certain point it's going through um anyway that's my own that, that's only my opinion and um, there'll be lots of you that will disagree with my my point of view here but it is only a point of view guys okay if we had someone um asking about wildlife pond builds and things like that and i know you guys saw the build and i have directed them but i just want to show you what it's like in the middle of winter okay so as you can see now we've um the pond itself we've cut all around it um and you know it's cleared itself off a little bit now any grass that was on it has sunk and what have you but you know it's done really really well it's established quite well it's looking a bit bare because winter and all the plants and everything need to sort of um come back up but um you know it's done really well there's we put four fish in this pond and in the summer they actually spawned and they were only little small fish when we bought them so um you know we're really proud of the way it's done and again now this is going to be ready for all the frogs and things that um hatched out as ta into tadpoles and what have you in it when we first built it um and uh, you know it's a great thing at the moment we are seeing frogs that were in the hibernaculum which is just behind there now there is a build for the hibernaculum and i'll put it on the screen in the bottom right hand corner for you uh, a link to that at the moment uh because it's quite mild we've already got all of the spring bulbs coming through on you so um you know there's there's loads of little spring bulbs coming through so these will have to be uh dealt with you know well not dealt with but you know these will be up and 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 showing very very shortly so um so that'll be nice and where the camera is in an earlier episode we planted a load of bulbs there as well so we should be looking at quite a, a nice little area now, not last August, but the August before, if you remember, we collected um, about 60 bags of leaves. And that's pretty much what they've broken down to. Okay, And we're going to have a little look at what happens with this leaf mould. Um, we haven't got around to collecting any this year, and it's a bit of a shame. But, uh, and of course, as you can see, the bags have split open and everything else, and some of it's decomposed and others haven't. But I'm going to give you a closer look on uh, on what happens. So on my right here, you see some leaves here. This is how we collected it. Now, the best way to do this is to shred them, guys, okay? But I didn't get around to doing that, and we just put them into bags. And so, like I said, this has come out of one of the other bags, and they haven't really broken down a lot. There's a couple of ways you can do it. You can build yourself a steel cage and you can just stack them in and, and what have you. Now, they don't um, decompose like compost does. It's a fungal um, uh, action with leaf mould, okay? Um, so, but these are what they were like. And in here is a bag that has been breaking down. And as you can see, it is really, really nice stuff. So I'm going to come a bit closer. As you can see, this is all broken down. It's almost like soil. It's got little bits of twig in it and what have you. But this stuff is great for going onto beds and um, for helping with structure. Um, it uh, helps to retain moisture within the soil and, and everything else. And it attracts worms into your beds. It really, really is gold, you know. Um, you think that most um forests they go on and on and on and on forever and it's all because these leaves are falling down they've broken down and they're creating that really nice texture for stuff so you can see the difference these are leaves that haven't qu uh, started breaking down yet um and, it, and in there you can see a few slug eggs you're gonna have to be careful with that um but uh and then in here you know in this one Here's the lovely stuff that's broken down really nice. And this stuff that's ready will go. We'll take out the odd twig that comes with it. And that'll end up on the compost. And this stuff is just going to end up going onto the beds this year. And uh, will help with uh, retention and things like that. So, uh, 
so that's it today guys for this episode i know it's uh not a huge episode and the reason for like i said is weather has been so bad um But, you know, you, you've seen in earlier on in the footage about the damage that's happened to some of the polytunnels up here and glass houses. Now, what they were, there is a Facebook group that I'm a member of, and they were having a discussion yesterday with regards to uh, whether polytunnels or glass houses or greenhouses, if you want to call them that, um, were, um, were best. And there's a... Quite a big discussion on it, to be honest with you. Um, mainly because they're saying polytunnels don't stand up well to the weather and and what have you. Um, but as you'll see from the video earlier on, you know, now the glass houses, um, my uh, my polytunnel has stood up well because it's been built well. Uh, I put the effort in, and uh, and it's not going anywhere. Anyway, guys, for that's about it for this episode so i hope you all have a great week and i will see you i got a few days off now so i will see you in the next episode over the next few days i should imagine hopefully that episode is where we're going to be getting these beds under control and uh, and getting on with some other stuff so i hope you all have a really really good week and uh, i will see you in the next episode